Hello everyone, I'm Keenan47, aka Wolf King, and welcome to the Wolf Podcast, where we'll be giving our E3 predictions for E3 2019. With me today is... Hello everyone, I am Demikami Sistium Pun3000. Hello everyone, this is Florengy. Hello everyone, this is Geeky Steven. Hey everyone, this is Mario Fanboy 15 aka that guy, uh... Gosh dang it, Games Reader! You, Games Reader, you are you are such a crappy website. <laughs> Ouch! Ouch! Yeah, because we don't. Yeah, because we don't. Fighting words. Because we don't know if Devolver Digital is supposed to be showing up on Sunday or Monday. Like, guys, double check your fucking sources, please. <laughs> and they even included a picture that said Sunday, and they wrote on the website Monday. Uh... I mean, this is what you get like when. Can you use a backwater, like, no-budget site as your scheduling source, so... Exactly. <clears throat> oh, man. I'm still wondering why E3 didn't have the schedule. I looked all over the website. I feel like, I feel like they're going to be posted a week beforehand, but anyways, we're going to be giving our predictions on this next E3 coming up. As you may or may not know, there are certain companies that are not showing up this year at E3. Like, for example... Sony's not going to be there, and I believe EA's not going to be there either, right? Yeah, I think they're doing some yeah. sort of state of play-ish, direct-ish presentation on Saturday, but I think it's their own venue. They're not at e going to be at E3. Yeah, so those two are going to be out, which means that we... Well, we're going to have less to react to and otherwise, because this guy, Kiki Steven, will be doing the reaction video, which, if you haven't seen the previous ones we did, link will be in the description. But and honestly, I just yeah. about Fire Emblem in that one. <laughs> honestly, uh, uh, without EA, that video is going to be about half as long. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, give, give, yeah we, give, can no longer, we can no longer laugh at EA this year. Give it time. Yeah. We have Bethesda, remember? Oh, with Todd, gonna, Howard, oh. With Todd so Howard's like, Tell me lies, tell me sweet six. little lies. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how they crawl back from 76. I know. They, they can't. I, 16 <laughs> times the detail. <laughs> okay, so. And actually, starting it off, we have Bethesda and Microsoft on Sunday, so. Okay. Let's start things off. Let's start things off with Bethesda before we move before we talk about Microsoft, which is one of the bigger ones. So, Dean. Yeah, let's start with the bad before we get to the good. <laughs> yeah, and let's be honest, Bethesda, as as Logan said, how the fuck are they going to get anyone's attention this year after everything that's been going on with uh, Fallout seventy six, the microtransaction situation with Elder Scrolls Blades? And the fact that they're not planning on using a different engine for Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six. Hey, 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 uh, you know, so what, what difference a year a year makes? I know, oh. I, I know. I went from loving the Bethesda conference last year to, dude, there's been no fanfare for anything Bethesda has released. Rage Two comes out, barely anyone's talking about it. Fallout Seventy Six comes out, everybody fucking hates it. <laughs> so it's like, what can we expect from Bethesda this year? More Elder Scrolls Online stuff? Oh. <laughs> I... maybe? But I think the biggest thing they're probably going to show off is maybe an expansion for Fallout 76, because you know their roadmap and shit like that. Uh, full full uh, on damage control. That's what I'm ex expecting. I'm expecting full on damage control this year. Wow. I'm going to be entirely surprised if 76 gets mentioned at all, honestly. I will say this, though. Well, I, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I, unfortunately, they kind of have to mention 76, because 76 just recently got updates at the beginning of last month. Uh. So, so I would not be surprised if they're going to try and start to win people over by releasing their new, their first major, like, content patch, content <laughs> update for it. I doubt it's, but, well, let's be real here. Is that thing actually going to be stable when it comes out, if they do that? No. It's not. Yeah, like, I sincerely no. doubt. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's, but there's one thing I can, I can expect from Bethesda. The first, I expect the first hour to be, to be nothing but uh, a band playing. <laughs> Uh, Bethesda, aren't you more talking about freaking Ubisoft? 
No, because, like, remember oh. last year, like, they got, like, Andrew WK to open up Rage yeah, 2. And, yeah, 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 and that was for Rage 2. Also, I'm hearing an echo of myself from someone's end. I don't know why. All right, here, let me get my headphones. But, yeah, that's... <laughs> you aren't wearing your headphones! Why aren't you wearing your headphones? Like... Because usually the frigging call doesn't echo on my end. Well, this is not a normal call. <laughs> it doesn't echo on anybody's end. Welcome to the Wolf Podcast, where <laughs> even when we try to be the most prepared we can be, something still goes wrong. Uh, no, no, we're not blaming you. Dude, dude, Logan, we're not blaming you. This is just something that happens with us. Yeah. Right. This is 95% of the podcast. As, All as, right. as Cole has said, this podcast is cursed. Uh, yep. uh, uh, yeah, uh, from, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know if, uh, if you guys are, but from uh, last year, th- uh, there, there was, there was, uh, 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 there was like a band there that performed for a big length of time. I was just getting bored by them. Uh, you mean yeah, the was... Andrew WK concert, right? For yeah, Bethesda. For Rage, yeah, for the Rage Two reveal. Yeah, I like Andrew WK, but they took up a lot of time. Yeah, if I. If I had... If I had to make a legit prediction for Bethesda, though, I think they're going to be showing off some stuff for Doom Eternal because that is a game I am looking forward to seeing. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because mm-hmm. remember, mm-hmm. remember they uh, teased Doom Eternal at last year's E3, and hopefully this year they've got some gameplay to show off for us. No doubt they would, especially at this point, because they've been talking about it plenty of times before. So. We're bound to see some footage, probably some new weapons from Doom Eternal is my prediction from that. Probably some new enemy types mm-hmm. too. I would love to see like some of the other enemy types from other Doom games make it in. Hell yeah. Yeah. And the last yeah. thing and the last thing I can make a prediction, which I doubt it's ever gonna happen, but they do have the studio. I would love to see like a new Dishonored get announced. Lol. I well, yeah, it it's possible but i don't know if they ever hinted at like a dishonored 3 like what else has the the studio that's doing that has been doing fallout 76 um oh well oh, okay oof. yeah oof. Oof. remember all of st- all yeah. of all of bethesda's major studios worked on fallout 76 according to todd yeah. howard according uh but tell me lies tell me sweet little lies <laughs> Uh, I guess it kind of just depends if they want to try and uh, like bring that up. I don't know how well like the Dishonored Two and its DLC did. I heard it did pretty all right. So... I mean, I mean, I would like to because let's face it, there's not too many stealth franchises anymore nowadays. Uh, we'll get to Ubisoft, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. But are there any other predictions you have for Bethesda? Uh, uh, not really. I'm honestly not expecting much from them. Outside of them trying their hardest to basically act the good guys, no, I don't really expect anything much from them. Probably, uh, they'll probably, like, talk about that. I would honestly like it if they talked about that sort of Fallout Shelter successor at all. Uh, The one that's only available in China. Wait, there's a... Fallout Shelter successor? Yeah, there, there, there's there's going to be a sequel. Dean, there's going to be a sequel, but, but for some reason, for the moment, it's only going to get released in China. <laughs> Why? That's I don't the, know. That's the real yeah. question. No. I have no idea. Yeah. Oh, okay, like, I guess we're bound to see that. Cole, go ahead. Yeah, like unfortunately, be- and like I've tried a couple of uh, Bethesda's games, and I enjoyed four fine. But honestly, New Vegas is probably the one game where I wish I had play- I could play more. I could have played more of it. But I'll be real with you. I'm very whelmed when it comes to Bethesda. I'm uh, maybe a little bit worried that they're going to become the next Electronic Arts. Yeah, and I don't want that to be. Yes. Yeah. yeah, especially with some of the rumors about what they might be adding to 76, like loot boxes and shit. <laughs> Oh, mm-hmm. and, 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 and didn't, and didn't EA have like a similar a similar path as well? It's just like started off as this company that people actually li- uh, liked until until they did bad decision after bad decision. Well, some more like they and it's existed. gotten so bad the U.S. government has actually had to step in. Yeah. and say no. Great, like good job, gamers. You played yourselves because now. This, oh, it ain't going to be that bad situation, has become so bad the government had to get involved. But that's a different conversation for a different day. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, he's right. 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 gamers with companies in this case. No gamer really liked loot boxes. Exactly. I blame the internet. Pretty much, but yeah. I think we're good mm-hmm. with I think we're good with Bethesda. There's not really much to I, say about them. I expect, I, mean, I expect a one hour concert from Andrew WK. <laughs> nah, <laughs> it will. Uh, you might as well <laughs> have something like that. Just replace the Bethesda co- Bethesda conference with a fucking concert. If that it's that, just if it's that bad, awesome. like literally, I'm giving. I mean, that would honestly be a better use of my time. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm perfectly gonna, frank with you. Laugh. Honestly, such. I'm I'm waiting to see what Bethesda does, but I am not looking forward to Bethesda's conference, unlike I was last year. So, anyways, yeah. Let's. But move. the only thing oh, yeah. uh, I didn't input. Uh, the only thing that I could probably just predict is just damage control, and maybe they'll mention something about Starlink and that Elder Scrolls Six thing that people seem to be all uh, hyped up about. All those kids, uh, <laughs> although. Considering how well that Fallout 76 did, I don't know how well people are looking forward to that now. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, Starling Star Starfield, whatever it's called, I think I can almost... I think Dean has a point we might see a proper teaser for that, but I think Elder Scrolls 6 is much further off. Yeah, Starfield yeah. seems to be more likely given that, you know, that's their new IP. It's fucking Elder Scrolls in space, and that's going to be cool. Although if it, if it's, it's by Bethesda, but fuck that. And it's on the mm-hmm. creation engine, which is an engine that needs to be taken out back and shot. Double fuck that. <laughs> but, yeah, mm-hmm. I think we can now move on from Bethesda and move on to Microsoft, which... There is a lot to say about Microsoft, so for this one, I'm going to employ the structure we've done in previous podcasts. Bethesda, it was small enough that I feel like we could do it open platform, so... Dean, take us away first with Microsoft. Okay. Um, it, Microsoft kind of acted like the wild card that was able to put out, like, here's all this third-party stuff that you might be interested in and get hyped for. So that's the part that I am looking forward to the most because not for nothing, the Xbox One is good at its third-party stuff. Um, but uh, as far as first party is concerned, I heard or at least some article uh, that they plan on showing off, like, 14 first-party games. Mm. That's at least from what I've heard. Uh, guessing one of them's a Halo and a Gears. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a Forza somewhere. But other than that, I'm just like, all right, sure, the first-party stuff might be cool, but... Uh, if they show some really cool third-party stuff like they did last year, then I'll be probably happy with that. Or, or, or something they show they show off the, they show off that brand new car from yeah. a few years ago. Yeah, they do that every <laughs> they do that every year though. It's almost like it's expected at this point. Yep, pretty much. Um, cold. So I'll just be blunt and say that I expect the majority of games to be announced at Microsoft's conference because that seems to be the pattern they're going for lately. It almost seems like Microsoft knows no matter how much they invest in their Xbox, it's not going to it's 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 not going to be able to catch up with with anything Sony does. So they seem to just really be focused on trying to show off what the Xbox One X's enhancements can do and get people to try and buy it through that. So I'm expecting to see a lot of re- uh, the majority of titles we get at E3 to be announced at Microsoft's conference like they were last year. But I also expect that we're going to hear more ex- expansions regarding backwards compatible games with the Xbox and new stuff regarding um, the Xbox Game Pass and their bizarrely intimate relationship with Nintendo. Yeah, because they've talked about bringing the Xbox Game Pass to PC. They're talking about bringing Xbox Live features to the Switch, maybe. And that in and of itself makes me curious. Like, wait a minute. Could this mean that they might bring the Xbox Game Pass to Switch? Because if they do, holy fuck. I mean, I would love that. But that seems a little stretching it. Mm-hmm. Well, we got. Well, if they do, then I'll welcome it. Well, then again, we've gotten games like Cuphead and shit on the Switch. And those are exclusive to the Microsoft platform. Yep. We also so, got Cuphead on the Tesla, though, so make of that oh, what you will. How about yeah. this? How about I, this? Master Chief for Smash. 
That's what a I lot can of road people... rage behind the wheel. <laughs> That's what a lot of people are asking for since Microsoft and Nintendo are very chummy. That or that are yeah, that are but... Crash and Spyro. <laughs> Yeah, but I would just laugh my head off. It's like we get a freaking like smash reveal in a Microsoft conference. Yeah, it's like, huh? <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> it wouldn't be that. It wouldn't be that surprising. But um, anyway, yeah, it's, I, 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 like, I, 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 I like Like beyond that, I don't have any predictions for any specific games. I have wish fulfillment, like say a DMC five DLC that was totally not not canceled <laughs> but beyond that i don't really have any specific games that i'm predicting to see at microsoft that said i would not be i would that said there is a part of me that's kind of hoping that maybe that rumor that Scalebound is being revived is true that would be a pretty nice sight to see but oh, yeah. other than that just the usual fare games 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 hopefully release dates please yeah. give us release dates get, get, get games i'll probably play on the the other systems. Well, yeah. we'll have to wait. For <laughs> I like. I better like. It's like. It's like with Microsoft. All these games are awesome. I can't wait to play them on my PS4. But <laughs> honestly, if Sony continues the crap that they're doing, this might actually be Microsoft's good hit to try and win people back over. Yeah, Check exactly. The Iron Maybe is hot. A new yeah. console release announcement. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can. I could. I could see that honestly because they hinted at a new console at last year's E3. Strike, mm -hmm. strike all the iron is hot. Oh, so, all right. Yeah. So, Logan, your th um, your predictions. I kind of predict that we'll actually kind of get glimpses at the next Xbox uh, mm -hmm. this year, because like Sony has pretty much uh, let out the first details of the PS5, and I feel like feel like it would be good for for Microsoft like get everybody thinking about their next console as well. I feel like any games for for the Xbox One that we get this year, they're going to be games that we either like already know about or games that are kind of close to completion, like uh, Halo Infinite, uh, that new Gears of War game that was announced last year, mm -hmm. Battletoads. It's like all that stuff is going to be on Xbox One. I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to get like gameplay footage of that this year. But any new games, any new games that get announced this year, I wouldn't be surprised if they are for the next Xbox, and we might get some details on that next Xbox as well. Yeah, I feel like it's just a good time for Microsoft to sort of capitalize now that Sony has spilled the beans on their system. Uh -huh. Yeah, and since Sony is kind of taking a break for this year's E3, this is kind of uh, Xbox's chance to try and win an audience. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it really um, is. And not to mention, if I can be that guy for a moment, I can see a lot of uh, games that are also on the PC being on the Xbox getting announcements here. Remember that Monster Hunter World, like the people on Monster Hunter World, did say that they're going to be at E3. Because Sony's not around, and that's where they were announced originally, I wouldn't be surprised that the Microsoft conference is where they announced more information for Iceborne and such. That's right, and Monster Hunter World, at least in the West, is on the Xbox One, so there will be people watching for it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like, I could see Microsoft capitalizing on a lot of updates, expansions, and shit like that, but I'll, I'll get more into that when it's my turn. So, um, is there anything else you wanted to add on, Logan? Not really. I feel like that's pretty much all I'm predicting in a small little uh, compact package. Um, I'm not really... Not like I'm predicting, like, any major, like, new game announcements. I mean, I know, like, a lot of people want Banjo, but everybody wants Banjo every year, so... Uh, kind of like how they want to conquer it's kind yeah, of like how I want a Rayman every year, but that's for later. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I, I don't really have any specific, uh, you know, like game reveal predictions. I just can kind of confidently predict that we'll probably start seeing more of that new Xbox at this year's show. All right, then. So, Zachary, your predictions. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I I I I literally just remember this, but um, a, a, a trend I noticed in like the last few years at Microsoft's press conference is like, wait a minute, two years ago, 
uh, the onset of, of fighters, like last year, Jump Force. Uh, I, I predict that this year will have more info on that, uh, that was a Dragon Ball Z Project Z thing that was announced a few months ago that we haven't heard anything about since then. Uh, I'm predicting uh, that at the very least. Um, other than that, I not I I don't really have any predictions for like what games are gonna get show, for other games are gonna get shown. Um, you know, like the usual stuff. You know, them talking about their Xbox One S and you know other stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I I honestly don't have much to say in terms of predictions other than oh yeah, we'll probably see more info about Project Z. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so getting on to me, like, as Logan brought up, they're probably going to show off the next Xbox console. I feel I'm fully expecting it to be backwards compatible, but I feel like they're going to take that a step further. Think about it. The Xbox One was the console where they had where they decided to try to do backwards compatibility, even upscaling with the Xbox One X for 360 and even original Xbox games. I think the next Xbox is going to continue that trend and even widen that library even more while also being backwards compatible with Xbox One games. If they do that, it'll make the transition from the Xbox One to the next platform far less egregious. And it'll also make it that people that have been with Microsoft since the very beginning now have a library that they could fall back on. And it'll look good Not on Not only their... that. Sorry. Finish. And it'll look good on their 4K HD TVs and all that shit. Because I'm expecting this console to be 4K at the bare minimal. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Future. Not only that, but considering the PS5 is rumored to be backwards compatible with everything PlayStation has come out, they're going to need to do that if they want to get if they want to compete. I've only mm -hmm. heard that the PS5 is supposedly backwards with PS4. I haven't heard anything about PS3 and beyond that. <laughs> mm. I've heard PS3 and allegedly PS2, but I haven't heard anything PS1. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see, but I did hear that it's supposed to be backwards with PS4, which should make the transition from 4 to 5 a lot easier. Second thing mm -hmm. is that we're probably going to be seeing some big announcements at the Microsoft press conference. The Monster Hunter expansion, I wholeheartedly expect to see Final Fantasy XIV here purely because it would make the most sense. Microsoft being the biggest... Shadowbringers. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like Showing off the content that we'll be seeing for Shadowbringers and otherwise and maybe even giving us like a sort of like, you know, a date for a demo for those that already pre-ordered the game and shit. And along with yeah. that, and like I said, I feel like Microsoft's going to be the one where we're going to be seeing a lot of the other companies big announcements but i think it makes sense since microsoft is meant to be the big a part of the big three and since it's really the only yeah. it's technically the only big three at e3 nintendo kind of doesn't do conferences anymore they do you know the directs and shit it would make the most sense for mm -hmm. them to show off all this stuff there right as for mm -hmm. as for microsoft itself i'm wholeheartedly expecting them to talk about more about the Windows 10 integration, which I'm also wholeheartedly expecting that with the new Xbox console, because one thing that I would love to see, and this is just me personally, cross, uh, cross, um, cr um, uh, cross, um, cross platform purchases. Like, imagine if you bought a game on Windows 10, it also allows you to play it on your Xbox console. You know, if you bought it on the Microsoft Store. Well, Microsoft kind of already does that. Well, well, they allow cross, um, they allow cross play, but I would love cross purchase as well. Ah, uh, get me like if you bought like if you bought a game on the Windows store in the on the Microsoft Store on Windows Ten, you can also download it digitally onto your like if you buy it digitally, then you could download it either onto your console or onto your PC. Or let's say you bought it on the PC, you can send it to your console while you're not even home. So that way it can download while you're at work or whatever have you. And when you come back, game's already installed, you're ready to play. Right. I would love a system like that, wouldn't ya? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that would be something pretty good if they don't screw it up. My biggest concern with something like that is that it pro probably would make it much more, their systems a bit more vulnerable to hacking. It would, it would. I won't deny that. But then again, that's always the thing about technology. It's always getting, it's always improving. There's always risks. But 
Microsoft has a lot of money that they could throw into these projects and a lot of money that they could throw into security. So if anyone has a good chance of making sure that they're protected in any kind of way, I believe in Microsoft. At least they're not going to keep it secret like fucking Sony did for the longest goddamn time with PS3. Uh, uh, as, yeah, as, 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 true. To give credit where credit is due, despite Microsoft dropping support for Windows XP two years ago, they released a patch for an extremely da- dangerous form, form of malware for those systems and earlier. So it's like when so say what you will about Microsoft, they are taking security more and more seriously these days. Yeah, yeah, they're certainly better at security than what Sony are. Uh, good, good lord. That, that that goes without saying, dude. Sony can't even get a function of changing your name correctly without it fucking up your PS3 purchases. Uh. Don't remind me, no. Uh, and let's into the extremely pain in the ass loopholes Zach needed to go through to get his goddamn account to work after he lost his password. But that's two different oh. accounts. I'm talking about changing your name with the same account on PS4. But then when you try to log in with that on PS3, it doesn't recognize it anymore. Yikes. And I'm talking about how he would need to have directly called customer service instead of pressing a simple cancel my account button. Yep, pretty much. Anyway. I, I, uh, that's a, gosh good. dang it, Sony. Why, why, Sony, why are you so Sony? <laughs> but beyond that, beyond that, yeah, I expect them to show off some more games, probably in the next Gears. Definitely some more info on Halo, especially since the Master Chief Collection is coming to PC with Halo Reach coming out, which I'm pretty sure they'll be showing us more of that. And mm-hmm. various other things of that nature. I don't know what else they'll be showing, but the big thing I want to see is definitely the Xbox, the next Xbox console. And if they're really trying to push Windows 10 support with the Game Pass and otherwise, I want to see how good this integration goes. That's the big thing. I'll say it once. Mm. I mean, say, I'll say it once. Sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Zach. Well, as I say, I'll say it once. I'll say it again. I, I fully expect more stuff on Project Z, and I'll probably cream my pants. But anyways, that's enough of that. So now we move on to... <laughs> enough. Now we move on to Upload VR. This is not really something we could say much about because it's something new. And the best way to summarize it is, I just looked it up, it only lasts an hour. And it's basically showing... It's supposed to show off some of the VR games we'll be seeing in the near future. That Wait, an hour of a VR segment? Yeah, only an hour. After that, it goes to the PC oh. gaming show, which I guess makes sense because, you know, VR, PC gaming, all that shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't have uh, any... Uh, I don't uh, have uh, any... Uh, Go ahead. Uh, no, uh, uh, isn't the Valver Digital Sunday night? I have no it's idea. Like... It's probably going to be like late at night. And let's be uh, like, and let's be honest. Like it has been the past two years. And let's be honest. The best way to summarize Devolver Digital and our predictions on that: insanity, shit talking, shots at the mainstream media as a whole, and a lot of fucking bullshit with some games in it. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. some surprising localizations. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the best way to describe Devolver Digital. Let's be fucking honest. Yeah, they're pretty much the same every year, and we love them for it. <laughs> pretty much. Going back to Upload VR, I don't really think there's much we can say on this, because does anyone in here keep up with the VR gaming craze at the moment? I don't. I do. Okay, Dean, take the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I was about to say, Dean over here lives in the future. <laughs> I, yeah, I live in the future, or at least I've been to the future for a bit. <laughs> Yeah, I want a VR headset. How come none of you can't get me that for my birthday? Because uh, oh, yeah, it yeah. costs four hundred dollars, Nelson. <laughs> I need to give you money for Bron and Con. Uh, I hate all of you. Oh, the salt is real. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Uh, it's just my birthday is coming up, and I'm not expecting anything. Ah. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> don't, uh, don't worry, Nelson. I got you something. I don't believe that. But anyways. Me being me aside, and me being a dumbass aside, I don't think there's much we can offer on the VR showcase because, besides, honestly, I'm interested to see if they show us some new hardware for the VR platform as a whole. I think that's the one thing I do want to see, maybe some upgrades and updates to stuff like the Vive and the Oculus and shit like that. 
Maybe even show us some more. Yeah. Like what? smell a vision No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, I would just say better. No, I, would, no. I would just say, like, you know, like, more modern updates and otherwise. Like, imagine if they gave a better headset that had better displays and otherwise. That kind of stuff. It's very minor. I don't know much about this kind of shit, so... Well, the the thing is about like headset wise, it's just I'm only speaking with experience with the PlayStation VR. The quality of the headset is very high def, so I guess if they want to go 4K for that, which would be maybe weird. they it can. Would, it, would, it would literally be 2K in each monitor in each eye, it, which would be friggin' incredible and weird at the same time. But I think with the quality of the headsets that we have now, which is comparable to an HD television, I think they're doing fine in that regard. Yeah, and uh, I don't think there's anything we can add with the PC gaming show besides we're probably going to see some more stuff for Final Fantasy XIV. We might see some... I don't know. I don't know what's the best way to put it, because... Well, I would PC say... Ga- when it comes to the PC gaming show, I, I, it seems to me like, for the most part, that they, they like to focus on, oh, look how impressive these oh, we might are. Oh, we might see more from GTFO, you know, Ulf Anderson's game. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah oh, that's yeah. right, because uh, if I recall correctly, uh, Ulf and Simon did mention they were going hoping for an early access release in late summer. Yeah, so we but might... But there's no guarantee. So we might see something from uh, GTFO from Ulf and Simon. I don't really know much else about the PC gaming show, because most of the games that did keep up with PC, they're falling apart. Hi, Overkill's The Walking Dead. Hi, Overkill in fucking general. <laughs> Hi, Star Breeze. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like I'm honestly not expecting much from the PC gaming show because they're they 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 usually don't offer a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, last time I watched the gaming the PC gaming show, they did show off um, expansion DLC for XCOM Two, which I really thought was interesting. But I really don't know what's, you know, very popular right now in terms of PC and such like that. I'm a console gamer, not much of a PC gamer. I know someone in the I, comments I, would probably, I will... like, call us out for this kind of shit, but, you know, different strokes, different blokes. Uh, I, uh, uh, really on the record, I myself am, I consider myself an all-around gamer. I game on PC and console, but I haven't really been following the PC scene in a while, too, either. Um... The only th- and most of the hardware stuff that I would be following probably wouldn't be announced at E3 to begin with. I will say this: last year's PC gaming show was definitely better than the one from um, from 2017, where I was just about, oh, look about all this tech. Yeah, that was the one I watched. The, the 2018 PC gaming show was the one I watched where they showed off XCOM content, I believe. Mm-hmm. 2017 one was uh, was the uh, oh, look all this tech we yeah, have. Yeah, like, dude, if I wanted to see tech, I would watch the Tokyo Game Show. Yeah. Hmm. Like seriously. I yeah, would... and I think there's also a a PC conference that happens. I think w- a few weeks before or after E3. Actually, that's where they really, really talk about the tech. All right. So. So. Good. So, I in terms of games, though, um, as weird as it sounds, I would not be surprised if they if they showed most more of like something like say. Sci- Punk 2077 because I think CD Projekt Red was really pushing the PC platform a bit more, but beyond that, I got nothing. Oh yeah, that's another thing that I'm probably going to expect out of the Microsoft conference. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. So hmm. now we move ourselves over to Ubisoft, and everyone say it together. What are we expecting from this conference? Sandbox, Sandbox. games. Sandbox. Open world games, towers, <laughs> climbing, Assassin's Creed, the, the Division, Leap of um, Faith, the crew, okay. Dean falling asleep during the conference, <laughs> for the and leaving to make a sandwich, and of course. The big hitter, Just Dance 2020. We know it's oh. going to happen. Yeah, we know oh, it's oh, going to oh, happen. And, yeah. and, 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 and of course, Logan getting sad about there being no Rayman. Every single year, and they me never being give sad me what prob- I want. And me being sad because we're probably not going to see another Splinter Cell. Ubisoft, give us a new fucking Splinter Cell already. It's been seven years. Oh, don't you know, Nelson? They're going to show all on all. It's going to be an open world game. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you. 
I mean, Rain, Rain Man Legends the- has been put out on like every platform under the sun. It's it's time for something new, guys. I will, please. Yeah. Yeah, please, <laughs> Ubisoft, do something different with your games instead of doing the same thing over and over again. Like, holy crap. The definition of insanity. Exactly. It's like, yes. yeah. Um, you know how we got that unexpected Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom battle like a few years ago? Can we get more of that, Ubisoft? Exactly. It's like, it's like, I, it's like seriously. Seriously, Ubisoft is so predictable now. I mean, we're going to be seeing gameplay for the next Ghost Recon because they've already announced it. We know we're getting a new Just Dance. We know we're probably going to be seeing some more like open world shit. I wouldn't be surprised if they show off a new Assassin's Creed here. Which, Ubisoft, please stop with the open world Assassin's Creed. These are the re- This is the reason why I've never kept up with the series. Because I don't want to spend hundreds of hours playing a fucking, like, a fucking Origins just to play uh, Odyssey. Like, holy shit. Assassin's Creed needs a break at this point. Assassin's Creed. Well, yeah. that's what they did for one of them, and it actually turned out rather well. It's when they did, it, they kind of made another one the next year is when it started falling into uh, similar numbers again. Like, <laughs> no, please. It's happened before with uh, High Unity. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, like Ubisoft, take a break <laughs> from open world sandbox games and just give us more focused games. Like, if if there's anything DMC Devil May Cry has showed us, sorry, not DMC Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry Five. If there's anything <laughs> Devil May Cry Five has shown us, is that you can make a linear action based game that only lasts a few hours but still be fucking fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, cool, oh, cool. Are, uh, uh, are you expecting anything for uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2? So, I'm hoping and praying for a release date, but realistically, I just want some goddamn gameplay, because everything that we've seen so far that's either made me scream in excitement or be very, very confused by... <laughs> last year, Jade, yes. why are you working for the alpha sections? Um, has always been pre-rendered video. I want to see what this game actually looks like in-game. Yeah, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm with you on that one, honestly. It's like, enough of the characters, yeah. enough of the world building. Can we see what the game actually looks and plays like? I mean, give Maybe so- that is the game. I mean, give Sony some credit, <laughs> even with stuff like The Last of Us and shit like that. At least we got an idea of what the gameplay was like. Mm-hmm. Still no release date. Still no release date, yeah. but then again, at least we know like the gameplay ain't changing all that much from the first game. Except with a few extra additions, like the fucking bomb arrows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Watch yep. they show the release date at, like, the end of the trailer and Cole goes fucking nuts. <laughs> for Beyond... For record, Dean's referring to Beyond Good and Evil 2 on that one, not The Last of Us Part 2, because that's yeah. uh, Sony. Who isn't here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, fuck The Last of Us. I mean, the, oh. Uh, oh, and, oh, Beyond oh, Good and Evil. Oh, and don't forget the most important thing with Ubisoft. A new Trials game. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be fair, we're probably going to see a new Trials game. Man, Ubisoft mm-hmm. really is that predictable, are they? Uh, uh, well, there's also, there's also South Park, which is might come up, probably. Maybe yes. DLC, but I'm not sure. All I ask I don't know. Is, as weird as it sounds... Go ahead, go ahead. As weird as it sounds, it sounds and I know it's not open world game, but because of how well Ubisoft turned Watch Dogs 2 around from how not so great Watch Dogs 1 was, I would be open to seeing if what they do with a Watch Dogs 3. You know, yeah, because I heard 2 was actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm actually... Meanwhile, though, Logan has one specific game he's looking for. Well, we already covered it. I would like a new Rain Man, but I know that's not happening. And I would like What is happening, yourself. though... It's like what is happening though is well, like you guys said we're, we're probably going to see Beyond Good and Evil Two this year like actually being played in the flesh. Uh, oh, I got. We're, we're probably going to get like Assassin's Creed, Usual Suspects sort of thing. Also, please mm-hmm. Ubisoft, don't spend forever on Rainbow Six Siege. We know you fucking love the, the that game. <sighs> Just stop. Stop. Remember, la- remember last year when they spent so much time on it? We were just like, we don't care. Watch them do it again. Watch them do it again because the game is four years old now and still being good. Uh, well, quote unquote. Quote unquote. But anyways, <laughs> let's move on to Square Enix, which this one I'm actually the most unknown about. I mean, what is there for them to talk about? We already know about, like, Kingdom Hearts well, 3 for, is... For, for, for con- 
for context. Go ahead. There's two things for Square Enix to talk about. The yeah. first is obvious, Final Fantasy fourteen. The second is the Final Fantasy seven remake. There's also Avengers. Mm-hmm. There's oh, rumors right. floating around that we're going to have a playable demo of FF7R. Which yeah. we're probably going to get like an extended like gameplay thing, uh, demonstration. Like pretty much showing Midgar. The whole Midgar sequence probably is what we're going to be seeing. Probably. I'm just so... Go ahead. Well, I was saying, I'm just hoping Square Enix's conference is a lot better than last year's because holy crap, was last year's lackluster. Well, that's because it was yep. pretty much like games that we've already seen from other companies and yeah. The Quiet Man, which I've heard was a really bad game. You want to know what's that? Yeah, wanna, it was terrible. You want to know what's the funny part? Um, one person literally made it like out. It's like, of course, Square Enix let go IO Interactive to pursue other projects, like The Quiet Man. Good choice. <laughs> Yeah, that game blew. <laughs> yeah, like, good choice. Yeah, like, you lost Hitman for the Quiet Man. Slow clap. Hey, 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 that was actually a nice string of words, Nelson. But, uh, yeah, but yeah. Beyond well, that, for... S- Sorry, I'm taking over this one by accident. <laughs> You're fine, Cole, but, but if I was to add on, yeah, we're probably gonna... If we don't see Shadowbringers in Microsoft... We'll definitely see that Square Enix and probably some information about Final Fantasy VII Remake. But another thing is I would like to see them maybe talk about more games being like brought over to some of the other platforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, another one I'm expecting simply because it's supposed to be releasing in late 2019 is we'll probably see a little bit of Dragon Quest XI on the Switch. And... It, since it's been six months, maybe we'll hear something about the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC. And not the mention... I would... Go ahead, go ahead. I would love to see something like that, uh, just because uh, Lord knows the game needs more support. And uh-huh. we hinted at the whole... And Namora has hinted at him wanting to explore the concept of DLC for a Kingdom Hearts game. And... So... And another we kind of need it. And another thing, we might see some more information for Crystal Chronicles remake, or at least Crystal. Oh yeah, Chron- that's right. That is coming out. Yeah, we still haven't heard anything about Crystal Chronicles on the Switch and stuff. I, we might see that on the Switch conference, but I would at least like to see a release date from Square Enix's uh, part and such. I, 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 I'm. I'm just I'm I, I'm just hoping I just I'm just hoping to God I, I'm just hoping to God it is it, like last year it's just like oh here are these here are all these games that are always showing up at the other press conferences yeah and the quiet man yeah, yeah and the quiet man uh, Logan is there anything you want to add on you've been super quiet not really all right not expecting well, much of Square Enix, doesn't Logan. get along with Square I don't blame him. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to redo this part purely because there was a few things that happened a few days when we were recording, so we had to cut it short and come back to it later. So, yes, we know about the remaster of Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yes, we know about the sun, like you know, the sword and shield and otherwise kind of bull crap, but those will not be brought up here since we're talking about predictions of E3. So, this yeah. Po- this podcast is cursed. Shut up, Zach. This podcast is very cursed. Shut up, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone. are we wrong though silence i'll kill you are you wrong though silence <laughs> i'm not doing that my voice is not right now good so anyways we're going on to nintendo now and we're gonna do this one we're gonna do this in order so dean go ahead and give your predictions from what we might see with nintendo uh hmm. well okay we already went over Pokemon and well we already had that direct that happened so I can or I can see them actually like showing a trailer that they did show at the direct over at uh over at E3 just in case folks missed it but other than that in terms of new stuff um I can see them briefly talk about uh Fire Emblem Three Houses because we're only like one month away from its release yeah, and we've mm-hmm. gotten some details on Twitter and shit, almost like how the Monster Hunter team is doing their Monster Hunter stuff, but... Yeah, there's that, and... Shit. I'm just gonna come to think of it, yeah, they haven't really showed much in, in terms of, like, English voice acting yet, so maybe that's something that they're gonna show off. 
Isn't there a, isn't there one isn't there one voice actress that's confirmed not to be coming back? Yeah, Christina V. Unfortunately, isn't reprising uh, the role that she had in the trailer. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Something apparently went on. I hope this doesn't. I hope this means that they just found a you know someone else for that. But I, who knows? Um, as far as like other games are concerned. Um, I feel it's unlikely that we're going to be expecting something from Metroid, unless they decide to do, like, I don't know, a remastering of the Prime Trilogy, but even I'm skeptical of that. I mm. would not be actually surprised if they did that, to be honest, considering it would be a good holdover until we get more info on 4. If yeah, they, and I know a lot of... Oh, go ahead. If they do do a port of the Prime Trilogy, I think one thing they definitely need to take advantage of is the gyroscopics on the Switch. This would Please. allow this would allow the best of both worlds, the, like you know, allowing you to play with a controller with both sticks, but also allowing you to choose between like either the traditional two stick format or maybe the one stick and the gyroscopics. Mm. You know, and use the other stick like you know how the other function on it was, but that's just me spitballing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can see them try and do something for that in order to like quell the folks that were disappointed that Metroid Prime Four um, is unfortunately delayed. So I guess we'll just have to see. Otherwise, um, I just expect... I'm keeping my expectations a little tempered for this one just because I know there's a lot of stuff that Nintendo has to show off. <laughs> and uh, considering that a lot of projects has been remaining dormant, see Animal Crossing and Bayonetta 3, uh, I can only hope that they'll decide to uh, showcase some of those games. We'll have to wait and see. Anyways, um, Cole, you're, t- you're up. Uh, okay. Um, I think Dean's right that we might get one more trailer for Three Houses, but I'm just like, please, 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 Nintendo, give me something from Bayonetta 3. I want to see my wife in action again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so you know it's probably not going to happen. Please up zero. <laughs> Come Look on. Off, Zach. Oh, be quiet. Wait for I your have turn. I a friend, though... Like, I have a friend who's been wanting an F-Zero game, a new F-Zero game for forever, and since we're seeing a lot more of the more um, less realistic, race, the more kart racer style games, I wouldn't be against it coming back for one more round. That, that series has been dormant for almost two decades now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, uh, beyond F-Zero... I think Link's Awakening is supposed to... The Link's Awakening remake is supposed to come out later this year, so I would not be surprised if we saw a trailer with a release date for that. Oh, yeah, if, because they only confirmed it for November so far. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo's releasing a lot of stuff for November this year. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's uh-huh. packed. Uh, <laughs> Broke-tober. God damn it. Broke-vember. No, bro. September, October. October, November are like might as well just say you have no money. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, uh, and especially be- December. Mm-hmm. Fucking Christmas. Uh, uh, beyond that, uh, I want to see something for Persona Five Scramble. I think we'll see more for Dragon Quest Eleven. The only things I really do want to see the most are Bayonetta Three and Astral Chain, and I think that's about it. Hooray for Platinum! <laughs> Platinum Games is. Killing it. Can we get a near automata switch port, please? Oh. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I see, uh, Tina. Um, yeah, as I, um, yeah. And motorcycle in the background, but anyways, um, is is that all? Is that all you have, Cole? Yeah, like I really do want. I think that Nintendo has a lot that they could offer and show off this year, right? At E three. The matter is if they're actually going to show it off or not. Oh, I'm hoping that we'll also hear about the new Smash character at E3, too. Yeah. Oh, we're bound to. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't have an E3 and not have a showcase of whatever new character it's going to be. Yeah. Pre- yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, Logan, take us away. I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, most of what you guys... Uh, said already, I was just kind of reacting like, oh yeah, that game's coming out. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, like, I'll be perfectly honest, like, outside of Smash, maybe a few other Switch games, 
I'm really bad at keeping up like with what Nintendo's coming out with. And when I do like remember what they are coming out with, I'm like, oh yeah, that looks cool. I'll probably play that. Uh, uh, games like Bayonetta 3, uh, Link's Awakening Remake, probably Fire Emblem, although probably not Fire Emblem because I don't care. Uh, I'm sorry, Dean. Oh, how dare right. you? Uh, <laughs> ah, I see, I see, I see uh, Logan's cat as an expert. But expert. <laughs> I'm really hoping that... Uh, whatever Smash reveal they have, it is uh, just as much of a surprise as Joker because it's like the thing about Joker was that not only was he like a really cool addition, but nobody really expected him to come. I mean, because, I mean, because, I mean, because, I mean, because Persona 5 is a PS4 exclusive. It is a, a series that is predominantly on Sony platforms. So... So, like, I don't really think many people really expected uh, Joker to uh, come on to the game. And even then, uh, Joker's not even that much of a legacy character either. He's relatively fresh in uh, the uh, gaming cultural zeitgeist. So him coming into Smash at this point in time was kind of a... It really, like, turned a lot of heads, and I... I'm really curious to see if Nintendo can uh, recreate that feeling with uh, their next character reveal. If I, I guess be, could... if, if I could be that guy for a moment as well, the one thing I like, though, is that they didn't just stop at Joker. They also went ahead and added, like, music and references and otherwise to some of the previous Persona games, both in DLC costumes, the music tracks that they have, and even Joker's outfit in general. Like, it felt like a complete series representation, um, except for Persona 2, because uh, well, Persona 2 doesn't exist. Well, uh, well, 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 even then, Persona 1 2 got, got some love in, in terms of like uh, alternate costume for Joker. No, they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. The red jacket yeah. has actually been confirmed to just be Persona 5. I was about to really? say, like, that Persona sucks. 2 has absolutely zero representation. Yeah, the jacket, yeah, yeah, the purple jacket is representing one. The red jacket apparently is just supposed to represent five's entire motif. That's so, just yeah. stupid. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, unfortunately, yeah, Persona 2. But then again, I think that's mostly because, unfortunately, when it comes to Persona 2, as I've said many times over... It's two different games, and really, you can only really play one or the other because there's two different versions. But that's a different discussion for a different day. Mm -hmm. I do, so, yeah. I do agree with Logan though. Like I said, that Joker would be a cool character for Smash, and even spitballed ideas. But even I was like, I doubt that's gonna happen. So when it happened, I guess. Sorry, just, I guess you could say. I, I guess you could say we never saw it coming. I somehow did, and I don't even know how I saw it coming. Okay, well, so Nelson told, unlocked his third eye. Yeah. Well, truth be told, Joker not, not be, be getting into Smash isn't too much of a surprise when you consider that Sega and Nintendo are actually on a good relationship with each other. And Atlas is now owned by Sega. So a lot of people are actually thinking that we'll either get a legacy character from Square... But honestly, I doubt it with how stingy they've they are. They've been with Cloud. Um, but um, I know also a lot of people are hoping but also, a lot of people are really hoping we get some representation from Microsoft, considering those two are literally in bed with each other um, right now. <laughs> Cole, Cole, you realize what you just said right there, right? What? Yes, Nintendo I do realize what I just said right there. No, you no, should no, get no. Master Chief in Smash. Well, not just that, but you <laughs> literally... No, no, not just that, but you literally said that, we, that Sega and Nintendo are in good relations with each other, and they own Atlas. You want to know what's another company they own? Mm -hmm. You want to know what's another couple what? of Sega owns? What? What? Put Majima in Smash. Oh, oh fuck that's it. right! No, fuck you, Nelson. They oh, okay. deconfirmed that. <laughs> uh, fuck you, Nelson. Anyways. I would love to see a Yakuza character in Smash. Come on! <laughs> fuck you. It's not happening. Yeah. Any <laughs> Screw your fantasy ideas. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, Link's Awakening. Animal Crossing. Fire Emblem, most likely. And that's really it, I think. I would like to... I want to follow my heart and say that they're going to start putting other classic consoles on the Switch, but they won't. They never will. It'll be like 2025, 
and they'll be putting Pong on the NES <laughs> section. Can I just please get Tales of Symphonia HD on the Switch because my disc, for, my first disc on the GameCube, is starting to not work properly anymore. Ouch. How about Skies of Arcadia? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind Skies of Arcadia. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, because yeah. I know I know one of my friends loves Skies of Arcadia. Imagine a remaster. Yeah, I played a little bit of it, but I would definitely not be against a remaster. But anyways, uh, Logan, is there anything else you want to add? Not really. All I'm saying is uh, Ubisoft, if you're not going to announce Rayman, please do me a solid and just put him in Smash. Please. <laughs> yes, now, please. Now look who's I don't there. ask for much in this world, but that's really all I want in life right now. Now look who's being unreasonable. Man, I just had this well, thought that... Well, it's not that unreasonable. Go ahead, Dean. I just had this thought that each of the conferences of E3 actually do have a representation for Smash. Like Microsoft <laughs> says something, Ubisoft says something, and then Square Enix says something, and then Nintendo says something. Oh my god. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, there goes the re- there goes the last four characters. $25, please. Anyways. <laughs> hey, anyways. that would fix, depending on who it is, it would be fucking amazing. <laughs> anyway, yeah. and anyways. And let's face it. Fight, fight, fight. We gotta move on, so Zach. No, let's think of everyone in Smash. <laughs> if we do that, we'll be here forever. These are E3 predictions, not Smash predictions. Come on. Phil Spencer Top for five. Smash. <laughs> Lloyd for Smash. Wait, did you say Phil Spencer? Phil, yes, Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer doesn't even have any special moves. Okay, he just runs it. around the stage. Okay, that's it. I'm ending it here. Zach, your, your, your predictions. Hey guys, Goku's gonna be in Smash. No, no, no Sakura has literally said that no to that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fuck you, Sakura. I put him in. No, please don't. No, don't. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, as far as well, that, well, we might see on Nintendo. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone's already forgotten about this, but um, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll see some kind of trailer for the new. Mario and Sonic uh, Olympic Games. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, would, yeah, that exists. That's also a thing, yeah, isn't that's, it? Yeah, it's that time of year, so yeah. Yeah. Um, well, please, it's actually fun. <laughs> yeah, um, Some more, you know, like, uh, stuff on Persona Scramble. Uh, shit, I don't... Hmm. Hmm. Are you in the same problem I was in, Zach? Yeah, I'm the same problem. You know, everyone's just been saying what I wanted to say. Yeah, I know, right? That's the problem when you have five people. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, uh, if you don't have anything else to add. Hey, guys, Slippy Toad for Smash. <laughs> that's it. I'm taking over. Okay, that's it. I'm taking, I'm taking my turn now. We'll say that they'll announce a Star Fox game for Smash. Please. I mean, a Star Fox game from Nintendo. A, a, Star, Fox Honestly, a, good Star, a good Star Fox game would probably be a nice thing to see, considering how terrible the last one was. And, yeah, not, okay. to mention, and not to mention, it just feels like they don't even know what to do with this fucking franchise. And, yeah. and, and, and the last game before that, Command, oh god... Command was confusing, but at least it fucking tried. It was a game. Like how many? Or actually, how many? Actually, the most recent Star Fox game we got was Star Fox Two for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, but still, think about it. How many remakes of the first game have we had up to this point? <laughs> like seriously, we had S- oh, we had oh, SNES. Star we- Fox Adventures Remastered. <laughs> Star Fox Adventures Remastered. I wouldn't be against that personally. I actually don't mind it, but there are some things that need to be changed, quite obviously. Well, uh, yes. I, I said it as a joke, but okay. I, was about to actually, say. I wouldn't be against it either. I want to play that kind of. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not a bad game. It's just the big question is why is it a Star Fox game? That's the big thing. Because, because, uh, because uh, yeah, no. Uh, Zach, is there anything else you want to add? Um, any? actually, n- no, not really. All right, then. So, as for my predictions for Nintendo, obviously, I feel like they might announce, like, the, they might either tease or announce the next character for, um, for Smash Bros. 
I don't I don't think they're going to give us a release date, obviously, because they did that with uh, Joker, where they did, like, a reveal, but they didn't really tell us when. Just gave us, like, a rough estimate of mm-hmm. when we might see them. Um, don't say when. Um, yeah, probably some more stuff for Persona 5 Scramble. I feel like people asking for a port of Persona 5, I feel like that's not really worth it, as I keep saying, since, like, Royal's coming out. It's literally going like releasing Persona Five on the Switch in any kind of way is just gonna da- is just gonna become dated the moment Royal comes out. Because if it doesn't yeah, come out on, it, because true. if it, sorry, Cole. Because no, I said if, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah, because if it doesn't come out on Switch as well, the Royal at the same time that it comes out on the other platform, then it's dating it. It's just dating the game, and that's not a good thing. Um, well, that's the thing. We still have about a year until like Persona 5 Royal comes out, and a lot of people have made the argument as well that even if you go back a version for Persona, you're still getting a good version of a Persona game. Yes, but it we, may not be yeah. the ideal version, but it would still be a version. Yes. And from what we're seeing from Royal, it is considerably different from the original. If I can be that guy for a moment, but the reason why I don't think it's a good idea either is... Even if they were to announce it during their conference, when are they going to release it? Because if they release it in 2020, they're competing with Royal, basically. If they release it in 2019, they're competing with every other game that not only they're releasing, but what everybody else is releasing near the end of the year. I'm not sure if it would necessarily be competing because, I mean, they're both in separate genres. But, yeah, it's so. Persona, no, but, so... Yeah, but I mean, you there's get... different crowds. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying. Like, if it gets released during the time of October, November, December, there's a lot of games getting released, and a lot of good games at that. So that's kind of why I'm is, saying it's hitting that point of being competing, but that's kind of a different story. Is, 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 isn't, Royal, yeah, is, isn't Royal supposed to be coming out in December in Japan? Yeah, uh, it's it's Halloween in uh, and plus, yeah, October yeah. Japan. And plus, here's and plus, if I could be that guy, if they were planning to release Persona Five on Switch, it would have been released in Japan. Like seriously, mm-hmm. because think about it, these games always release in Japan first before coming out in the West. So, which means that even if it was to be announced for Switch, we would be waiting a few months because it would probably get released in Japan first, right around the same time as the Royal, probably, and then get released here in the West, er, and probably around the same time as the Royal. So it's like. Plus, I just remembered something. There's actually another technically SMT game with the number five in it that's supposed to be coming out on the Switch. Yes, where is oh, SMT? Right. Yeah, where's Shin Megami oh, Tensei right. Five? It's oh, in right. the doldrums because. They're, dude, like uh, doing Persona. Dude, They'll probably like, emphasize that before they actually do announce like a Persona Five thing, unless they, <laughs> unless what Shin Megami Tensei Five is going to come with a voucher for Persona Five. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I could totally see. No, but then again, I could totally see them like having some kind of thing. Like, if, I don't know, maybe like buy Persona Five and you can get, and you get like a code for a demo for Scramble or some shit. But anyway, oh, I just oh, I just remembered something. What? I, I just, I just something. Um, um, if they don't, if they don't say anything, if they don't say anything about Animal Crossing. I am going to laugh because you're like, oh, people are gonna be mad. Everyone has been like impatiently waiting for fucking Animal Crossing, and even though they confirmed it for this year, it's like, well, they haven't showed much out of it. Well, then so again, then I don't again, know it's, how yeah, that's right. people are for But it. then again, it's Animal Crossing. It's one of those games yeah. where. You don't need to show much to understand the kind of game it is. Oh, look, I can fish. Cool. Uh, hey, guys, so like a sequel. He is an apple. Hey, guys, so like a sequel to Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Anyways, let me finish this up because we are kind of going a little over. No, we're not. Yes, we are. And, Zach, remember, we still have the other part that I got to splice together, which was 50 minutes. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. Well, 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 it doesn't feel as long as last year's. Why is everyone so pessimistic now? I because I they want know. because they want to talk about Smash, know. but this isn't a Smash prediction. This is an E3 prediction, motherfuckers. Dude, we were what? talking about Persona before. Why are we <laughs> talking about fucking Smash? This fucking podcast. Welcome, welcome to the Smash Cast, everybody. <laughs> if you have... If you have your great Smash series, uh, be sure to put them in the comments, and we'll be sure to get to them on the next episode. 
<laughs> I hate you guys so much. But anyways, getting back on topic. Kyrie for Smash Bros. <laughs> okay, getting back on topic. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know what else I could see coming from Nintendo besides like Cole said, Astro Chain. Maybe something for Bayonetta three. I mean, it's been it's been long enough. I feel like it is time for us to see some gameplay for Bayo three. And beyond that, I'm trying to remember. Uh... I'm, try- I'm trying to remember something. That I that I was thinking about for the switch. Do you but, think we might? Do you think we might finally get new details about Pikmin Four? Who knows? We no. have. Oh heard. yeah, I just remembered. There's also that rumor that Scalebound is going to be is going to be redeveloped on the Switch. If that happens, that'll be interesting, quite honestly. But I mean, mm-hmm. those rumors kind of died, so I'm not too sure. True. Good point. Yeah, let's not take much merit into rumors and shit yeah Uh, but they're fun um beyond that yeah like i'm super drawing a blank about something else that i would like to see on switch or maybe we'll see on switch man i'm so fucking stupid but i think (laughs) that's about it like the one thing i've definitely noticed is that we've been seeing some classic games being released on the switch with konami with the castlevania collection and otherwise i don't know it's kind of a hard thing to talk about. I swear to God, though, if Nintendo spends time talking about new services for the online, I'm turning on my 3DS and walking away. <laughs> because you know they're yeah. gonna. And what if they're actually good services that actually make the online worth buying? Well, we and got to... not an arbitrary money grab. Hey, you know what would be a nice announcement? Dedicated servers for Splatoon 2, particularly during Splatfest. You know what would be a great announcement? Actual co-op online for Super Mario Maker 2, because without it, you're literally killing the point of your game. Nintendo, why are you so fucking dumb? Anyways. <laughs> you want to you want, you want know what would be good? An actual fucking eShop, so we can actually buy some of these classic games instead of just using them on the freaking like you know any service and shit like that. Where well, we promise we have ga- an eShop, you're sorry. asking for a virtual console. I'm uh, sorry, virtual console, but you get what I'm saying. Where we promise GameCube games when this was fucking announced? Not well, really, no. No, we're not. So uh, uh, I don't think we were. No, but no, I'm mean, sorry. I got really heated there. No, but I'm being. But dude, we were told that they would have. We would eventually get GameCube games and shit like that. I mean, hell, the Wii U is able to do this shit still. This is one of the reasons I haven't put my Wii U away. Yeah, it's pretty much um, uh, like an emulation bed for me at this point too. <laughs> it's the virtual console machine until Nintendo decides to bring it to the Switch. Which oh, and my no. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess machine. Oh boy, guys, Virtual Boy games. But anyways, no. all ten of them. No. I'm leaving it there. <laughs> but anyways, it's compatible th- with Labo. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, I think that's it for me, and I think that's all we have in terms of the E3 predictions. We'll have to wait and see when E3 actually rolls through. But as we said before, Logan here, Geeky Steven, will be doing a another one of our reactions to all this crap. <laughs> It'll be very funny, I promise. <laughs> and it was, yeah. Are you sure? Because EA won't be there. <laughs> I'll try to make it funny. Well, at least it will. Well, at least it means that. Th- oh no! Let me not say that because then I'm gonna hurt Logan's feelings. <laughs> say no, <laughs> say no, no, no! You already fucking started. You may as well finish. Well, at least it means that. At least it means that we know who the worst editor is gonna be around here. <gasps> oh, yeah. nope. I'm, cr- I'm oh! crushed, Nelson. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> hey, you made that joke last year about how... Oh, man, who edited this? Like, it's almost like I edited this video during that whole E3 bullshit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is why I shouldn't be allowed in on fucking YouTube. A- a- cut a- to a- my a- very soul. And also, at least he's a better editor than you. Ouch. That's like, that. <laughs> and with that, what do you think about our predictions of E3? Have a prediction of your own that we didn't talk about. Have other topics. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. What Zachary said cut deep into my soul. Just go ahead. <laughs> just just go ahead and leave your comments down below, and we'll discuss it in the comments section. And now, and now Nelson kills Zachary. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> but, 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 but hey, look at look at the bright side. We may not have EA, but we always have Ubisoft and Bethesda to laugh at. Oh yeah, Bethesda's gonna be really fun to watch just squirm this year. 
It's a fucking. It's gonna be oh, really God, fun, yeah. but at the same time, it's gonna be really sad. But anyways, guys, be sure to pay attention for the E3 um, discussion video that we'll be doing after E3 is all said and done. And again, keep a lookout for Geeky Steven's video of our like reactions and shit like that. So, till next time, guys. I'm Keenan Four Seven, aka Wolfkeen, along with. I am Demikami System Point Three Thousand. I am Florengy praying Ubisoft doesn't b break my heart. I Again. am Geeky Steven hoping that uh, Bethesda has a very funny show this year because without funny material, I I can't make a funny video. I'm sorry. <laughs> And this has been my family 15, and it's so hot in here. Yeah, I know, because I'm about to send your ass to hell. Till next time, guys, take care. You're going there first.